So, Ron, I know you have a son, and uh, I think he's had a dramatic experience with the Lord. Uh, you don't mind? Uh, tell us a little bit about that, and um, you know how he's involved okay. with the Lord, and what his speak to that a little bit. It's hard being a preacher's son and a oh, minister's son, so I'm interested to hear. I want to. I want to know more about this. No. Well, um, so. I do, whenever I meet somebody that's a PK or an MK, preacher's kid or missionary kid, I always... feel sorry for him. I feel, <laughs> I feel sorry for him. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's the greatest blessing in the world. It is. And it's also sometimes a millstone around their neck. Yeah. And, uh, it, well, you know, being just a parent in general, it really challenges your truthfulness and sincerity about things because they can see it. They see straight through you. Um, I remember one time my son and I got into it. He was a teenager. And uh, I don't know. He, I can't even remember what it was about. But we were in a shouting match. And he says, well, why don't you at least just treat me like you treat the church people? Oh. Yeah. That's like a <laughs> Oh, gosh. Yeah. Killing me. Uh, so, but, yeah, they, they grew up and. Well, they you know, see that. They do. Yeah. The they do. They see you that. treat these people one way and then you treat us another way at home. And yeah. so uh, I tried to uh, yes. take that to heart. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've apologized to both my daughter and my son for just being hypocritical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, uh, they were in church from the time they were in the cradle all the way up. Uh, constantly involved in some kind of ministry. Um, then when it came time for school, we homeschooled them, and then we did Christian school, and then my son went to Christian college, and so it was just coming out of his yeah. pores, you know, just this Christian stuff. And he was probably ready to run from that. He, I, I yeah. don't, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was not biting. He didn't, yes. he didn't ever, it never became his. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I would say he was not opposed to God. It just it, di it didn't have any meaning in his life. He didn't. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't own it. Yeah. So <clears throat> he had uh, moved off and was living in San Antonio and was really struggling, um, just struggling with working a lot of hours and loneliness and stuff. And he met this girl that was there in the apartments she's a nurse and they just began to get to be friends and then it turned into more than friends sure uh they began to have a romantic relationship at, at that point he was still really struggling with just the, the loneliness of uh, life and mm -hmm. so <clears throat> i challenged him to read the gospels just the words of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So he said, well, you know, I, I don't read very well. I said, okay, well, I'll make you an audio. So yes. I'm, I, I literally just burned a CD for him with um, the gospels on it. So, cause I knew he had an older car that didn't have Bluetooth or anything. He could play those CDs. Right. And so while he was traveling for his company, he started listening to Matthew, Mark, yeah. Luke, and John. That word in you. The word of God, Ken, does the heavy lifting. It does. I can talk nonstop and try to convince you to believe, but there's something that happens when you read the words of Jesus. And that happened in my son's life. Mm -hmm. He the just the light came on somewhere along the way. He just reached a point where he couldn't take life anymore. And he received the forgiveness of Christ and eternal life. and um, But then he realized, you know, I've got this girlfriend and yeah. she's Muslim. That's not uh, a good mix. Not a good mix. Um, she came from a very strict Pakistani family, old, you know, the old country, old school kind of things. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they're, they're in this relationship but she and my wife had become friends. 
So we did the same thing with her. We challenged her to start reading the Gospels. Mm-hmm. She had never read no. the Gospels. No. She, Jesus is mentioned about 75 times in the Quran, mm-hmm. but it's a different Jesus in the Quran. It's, yes. a, it's Jesus the prophet. It's Jesus um, the, uh, the miracle worker or Jesus this or Jesus that, but it's not Jesus the son of God, the yeah. only begotten son of God. Uh, and so she began to read the Gospels, and it did something in her heart, too. Mm-hmm. It stirred her up, and yeah. it got her really confused because she didn't know what to do. There's a guy named Nabil Qureshi, and he wrote this book called Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. And she read that book, yes. and after reading that book, because he's Pakistani also, mm-hmm. uh, she said, Light bulb uh, yeah, I, something, something's got to give here. So my wife challenged her, go home, pray the most sincere prayer that you have ever prayed. And you say, God, who are you? Who are you? Yeah. The next day she called and she said, his name is Jesus. Amen. Yes. Her mother said, if you marry this guy and become a Christian, I will kill myself. Yeah. I mean, just the the family was. I understand. The family was just. It's, they cut them off. Cut them off. Yeah. She was willing to lose her family for her faith in Christ. Mm. Not just my son. I mean, that's a whole other issue. Right. But to to follow Jesus and to be a believer. Yeah. Um, and it was reading the Word of God that really got her to that point. So um, I had started a project about eight years ago uh, with a guy named Lucas Kitchen. And Lucas and I, we were just interviewing people and asking them if they'd ever read the words of Jesus. It's a good question. Yeah. yeah. And so I would say to somebody, just I'd meet, I remember going to the train station in Chicago and I'd just stand there at the train station and just talk to people and say, at any time in your adult life, um, I would say I'm taking a survey because I had my tablet. I'm taking a survey. At any time in your adult life, have you ever actually read the words of Jesus, which would be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John from the Bible? Over 95% of the people that we interviewed, both church people and non-church people, said, never read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never read it. Wow. 95. I asked my nephew one time, have you ever read? And he said, well, it never occurred to me that I should. Like, why should I? Yeah. Uh, that's what the preacher's supposed that, to do. Yeah, that's what the preacher, that's what the priest does. That's yeah. what somebody else does. Um, excuse after excuse after reason after reason that people have never read the words of Jesus. We stopped counting at about 1,300 interviews. Mm. And out of those 1,300 people, six people said, no, I would not under any circumstances even consider reading Six out of 1,300. So they're open. The vast majority of people are willing to read the words of Jesus. I mean, I I say to them, at least so that you can be uh, intellectually credible. Yeah. So that you can uh, at least say you've examined the words of Jesus. Whether you believe it or not, you've read it. Most influential man in history. Most influential man that's ever lived. Best-selling book ever. Read it. Absolutely. And it's so accessible, they can get it on their phones. I've stood there and helped people download the app. Awesome. You know, just say, I'll say, well, open your app store and let me just show you where it's at. Yeah. And they can download the app, get it into their phone. Mm-hmm. It'll start sending them notifications. Mm-hmm. And uh, their phone becomes the preacher then. The phone yeah. becomes their access to reading the Word of God. Yeah. Um, and we, is amazing how yeah. you can do that now. Both my son and my daughter-in-law came to faith through reading the Gospels. Mm-hmm. The Word of God is alive. It's quick. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's, you know, Timothy says it's God-breathed. And it is theonoustos, the breath of God. Breath. I love it. Now, a lot of the people that I've talked to, you know I've been on a bunch of podcasts as a, as a guest, and uh, a lot of these podcasters are interested in my story because they're, they're, uh, there's kind of a niche. It's a near-death experience podcast. Yeah. And I've talked to so many of these people, and they're all really interested. Once they cut the cameras and the lights and all that, 
they're like, can I talk to you? And I said, well, you know, sure. And there is such a hunger and a desire to know more. And these are educated people. They've read works of literature. You know, uh, they have a following. Uh, they're not just somebody that's, you know, turned on a, a camera or their phone and recording a podcast. Yeah. And But, uh, yeah, I think there's a real hunger there. Uh, one particular podcast I was on and afterwards, uh, this person goes by a different name. She's a, a, a woman and she goes by a different name because, you know, you never know about internet world and protection and she didn't want to put her real name out there. And just really, I, I felt there was like a spiritual connection with her. And off air, of course, I said, uh, I said, send me your address if you don't mind, if you feel safe. Because she, uh, she didn't understand the Bible. She had an old King James translation of the Bible. She said, I just don't get it, you know. Uh, so I got her name and everything, and it just got all over me, Ron. Her name is Esther. Wow. She was named after Esther in the Bible. So I sent her a Bible and uh, incredible. Yeah, so you know, um, I think there is that spiritual hunger and putting the word of God out there like you're talking about through, you know, CDs for your son and, and uh, the, the app and you know the technology that we're sitting here today. These yeah. recording it, it goes all over the world. It's just uh, you know we should take advantage of it. I feel like. Uh, a lot of um, people, you know, they're not going to come to your church. You know, they're not going to come to my church, but yeah. they will sit there and look at their phone and say, okay, yeah. I can read the words of God right here and the privacy of their own home. And the Lord uses that and he's used it in your ministry and, and things there. So, yeah. yeah. And I think especially even in the Muslim world, uh, there is such uh, intimidation by the family and uh, the business community and just friends in general that um, they don't want to be seen investigating the yeah. Bible, oh, no. Christianity. So uh, the the privacy. There's consequences. There's consequences. Yeah. The privacy of the cell phone and the computer uh, afford them the opportunity to read, to hear, to see uh, the Word of God that can be then transform their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And my daughter and my daughter-in-law, her name is Karima. This girl went from um, a life of not knowing anything except Islam to just absorbing the things about Jesus. I mean, she reads books and listens to podcasts and videos. And her and yeah. my son are constantly watching YouTubes and different things about yes. people who are, you know, teaching. And uh, it's like she's gained a, a theological education in just a few years that is staggering because she's hungry for it. This girl, I mean, and she's a travel nurse, so she witnesses to everybody on her floor. She's down at the, the soda machine getting a soda and talking to somebody down there about Jesus. And the fact that she's um, yes, Pakistani, Pakistani. And, and former Muslim, I mean, they're going to listen. They are. Whether they agree or not, they're going to listen. And they're like, my goodness, that, that is quite of a, you know, a change in your yeah. life. And she just, she's found the joy of the Lord. Praise God. The joy of yeah. the Lord. 